So, let's go ahead and hand out some awards for Texas A's. They not only have the number one class, but who are going to be the players that we're going to want to know in 2022. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, everybody. It's another episode of Locked On Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back here in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M. And today, let's go ahead and break down some of the biggest superlatives, my personal awards of what I think Texas A&M walks away with, with potentially the number one recruiting class and a few other things. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. J, check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com, and so many more other websites. Of course, you can check us out at LockedOnPodcast.com as well. This episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by NetSuite. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system for your growth. Head on over to NetSuite.com slash NCAA for special end-of-the-year financial issues for the number one financial system in growing businesses today. As always, my name is Cole Thompson. I am the host of the show, and I love public feedback. So anything you can do to make this from a quality-sounding podcast Monday through Friday, give me a follow, give me a shout-out, and I will add it into the mix. Secondly, Locked on Aggies. Locked on Aggies is your number one source for all things 12 May related content found here on LOP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, and if you can't do any of that, listen live every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com. So let's go ahead and start breaking down my superlatives. Texas A&M finishing with more undoubtedly the number one class. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about Evan Stewart real fast because it is official. Evan Stewart, one of the top 15 players in the class, the number one receiver in the state of Texas. And on most websites, the number one wide receiver in the country has officially signed with Texas A&M committing last night. I told you guys that there was a report going around that I had heard that he had second doubts. But I also said, and this is the key part, you got to listen with both ears if you want to go ahead and hear this podcast and truly understand that I do know what I'm talking about, that he would sign before the end of early signing period. Did say that, did happen. It is that was uh, a subject of conversation. Now that he is here, it has gotten so much better for A&M. They have solidified themselves as potentially clear-cut number one class on every single website. They're number one on 27 sports. They're number one on all three. I believe that they're number uh, two or number one on Rivals. They're number two right now. I think that they're about ready to jump into number one on Sports Illustrated's SI All-American. So, again, we're looking at a consensus number one class, which has never happened before in the Jimbo Fisher era and is so detrimental to the team's success. So, let's go ahead and give out my awards. The best overall player for Texas A&M that they got. I'm not going to waste a lot of time on this. To me, it's Walter Nolan. Walter Nolan is hands down the best player that you can get because if he's a 350-pound defensive lineman who can play a three-tech, he can play a nose, he can play a five-tech if you really want to, basically do what DeMarvin Leal did, but he's a little bit bigger, he's a little bit stockier, but he moves like DeMarvin Leal. So DeMarvin Leal was about a 285, 290-pound defensive lineman, had a lot of muscle, had a lot of frame. This is a guy who's 350 pounds, moves like he is uh, 220, uh, 248, I mean, a 265, 275, moves around that aspect. So you can play him at a five technique if you want to go from an outside standing blitzer perspective play him if you want to move him inside if you want to play him as a nose tackle guess what he has the size the ability to do it he's a great bull rusher and the one thing that i've watched on his film his ability to read and react to where the center is going immediately gives him an advantage and it's something that i don't think you can really teach it's something that you have with size that's something that jimbo fisher has been preaching about non-stop that's something that jimbo fisher has been loving about this class he wanted to build bigger, stronger, burlier offensive and defensive linemen. So guys who were 285 coming out, they weren't on his radar. He wants those 295. He wants those 310 pounders. He wants to be able to add a little bit of weight, maybe shed a little bit of weight, get a little bit faster in certain areas. And he was able to do that. So that's why I think Walter Nolan is the best player. You can literally use him any way you want. I don't think you'll use him in a, in a role like DeMarvin Leal. Personally, I think you'll use him more like a McKinley Jackson, a, um, a and PV, maybe even a little bit of what you see from what Bobby Brown was a few years ago. That's the type of role I think he fits. I do not know if he will play immediately just because of the depth that you have on the defensive line. But again, 
Look at what we said about Shamar Turner last year. Shamar Turner was probably going to have a year to kind of figure things out. Uh, no, he played immediately. He got immense reps right out of the gun. And the reason he did was because of he was so well respected and he was so quick to attention to turn on the Jets to be able to figure out what was working, what he needed to do. He immediately consist like immediately started thriving in the system underneath Mike Elko. And there was no other point but to play him at that chance. So that to me is easily the best move. Now, the most underrated move the one that people are not going to be talking about that I do think actually ends up having a bigger deal. And to me, that's Chris Marshall. I absolutely love what I saw from Chris Marshall on the film. Uh, when he coming out of Fort Ben Marshall, reminds me a lot of Josh Reynolds when he was coming out of high school to come to Texas a If you haven't seen Josh Reynolds film, go back and watch it. The way that he was able to play, the way that he was able to maneuver as a wide receiver – Big red zone target, got a little bit of speed, is able to kind of take the tops off of defenses. I really, really, really like the addition of Josh Reynolds. I thought that he was a fantastic wide receiver, one of the better players. And Chris Marshall, uh, yeah, Chris Marshall, he absolutely kind of fits that mold. About the same size, six foot two, six foot three, about 195. Got a lot of speed to him, adds a little bit of a vertical presence, but it's his physicality that when you watch on film, I really liked. When he signed, everyone kind of forgot about him because of Walter Nolan made the initial uh, agreement as well. But I honestly think that Chris Marshall could end up having a better career than some of these other guys. And we've seen this before. I don't think he'll have a better career than Evan Stewart. But there was a guy by the name of Chris Black when he went to Alabama. And there was a guy by the name of Amari Cooper. And Amari Cooper was the secondary wide receiver. And Chris Black was the superstar wide receiver. And coming out of high school, everyone talked about Chris Black, Chris Black, Chris Black. And Amari Cooper immediately made an impact year one. Chris Black kind of came around in year two and then eventually transferred to Missouri. Didn't really pan out. Not in the NFL. Amari Cooper, meanwhile, won the Bolitnikoff Award. He was a national champion. He helped his team win you know, multiple awards at Alabama. And he also was the lesser-known receiver coming into the class. I could see something like that with Chris Marshall to where – the expectations are low because if you added in a guy like Evan Stewart, kind of like Moose Bahamut, you added in a guy like Demond Demas, you're not really expecting that same type of consistency, and they end up breaking out. They end up being the superstars. They end up being your solidified playmakers year one, and you don't waste a red shirt year on one of these guys. You keep them around. They don't play right away, and then when you add them in, well, your lesser receiver is actually playing like your number one receiver and your number one receiver in recruiting could end up being your number one receiver, and that just means you get two number one receivers. Chris Marshall was a guy who completely flew under the radar, I think, for a lot of people, and that's the thing about Fort Ben Marshall. I really do think so. I, I don't know why, but you think about the guys who have come out of Fort Ben Marshall in the last few years, most recently Devon A-Chain, there was a lot of schools that didn't know where to play him. A lot of schools want to play him at quarterback, some want to play him at it back. Some people want to play him at wide receiver. But Fisher said, you know what? Let's just let this guy just have his track line speed in our backfield. We'll get some dump passes to him and then let him fly. It's very similar. I think Chris Marshall, you don't need to play him in the slot. I don't think you need to play him on the outside. I just think play him. Get him on the football field. And the second that you do, he is going to immediately fly. I absolutely love the film that I saw on him. I thought that he was a really talented player coming out of Fort Bend. I think that he fits what Josh Reynolds did in a while. And I would not be shocked to see him take a lot of significant reps next year. Wide receiver position is open. I honestly think Moose Muhammad is the only one guaranteed to see more reps. And that's only if Anaya Smith goes to the NFL. At that point, yeah, I really think anybody, and I mean anybody, could step up right away and have that immediate impact that you saw from a guy like Chris Marshall. Let's talk about this for a second. The game is on the line, you have the putt of your lifetime, and you solely just take your eyes off the field, you kind of are falling apart, you just don't see anything. That's a little bit how you're running business, isn't it? Poor visibility because you can't be relying on spreadsheets and outdated financial software. To see the full picture, you got to go ahead and upgrade with NetSuite by Oracle. Over 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite, and right now through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a once-in-a-lifetime kind of financial program. And it's the number one cloud financial program in the system with visibility and control for your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budget, and much, much more. With NetSuite, you can automate your process and close your books in no time while staying ahead of your competition. 93% of surveys increase with their visibility and control of the upsuite. So go ahead and visit netsuite.com slash NCAA lock NCAA for special end of the year financing on your number one financial system in growing business. Netsuite.com slash lock on NCAA. This episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by 
BuildOnline.he. Listen, the holiday season is right around the corner, and we all want to make a little bit of money. We all want to make a little bit of cash, don't we? So go ahead and make it place. Go ahead and place your bets at the one place we love and the one place we trust. That's BetOnline.he. BetOnline.ag is the number one source for all payouts, odds, betting, wagers, odds, and everything and much, much more from UFC to NBA to basketball to college football bowl season to NFL playoffs to MLB signings, everything and much, much more. Go ahead and visit them. Use the promo code LOCKEDON to receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. BetOnline.ag, your online sportsbooks experts. Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com, and of course, the Locked On Podcast Network. So, player who I think will have immediate upside. I'm going to go with the weird one. So, basically, what I mean with Chris Marshall was he went under the um, he went under the wire. Like, he uh, he's not, he's just an I Probably could have gone to a school like Texas. Probably going to go to a school like Texas Tech, TC, um, a lot of these other programs. And at that point, probably would have had a better opportunity to play. So I'm saying in this sense of the word, the underrated player, the guy who I think is going to have an immediate impact in year one, that probably kind of mentioned. I'm going to go ahead and throw one out there, and that is going to be Bryce Anderson. I really do think Bryce Anderson is a fantastic player coming out of Westbrook and Beaumont. I watch him play. He's a hard-hitting safety, but he's got really good coverage skills. You just lost that. You just lost that type of player. His name, uh, Leon O'Neal. Guy could play in zone. Guy could play in man. Guy was not afraid to play the deep cover one style. Guy was not afraid to play down low in the box. Could hit. Was willing to give up his body. Could blitz. Bryce Anderson does a lot of that type of stuff. He's really good at read and reacting. He's good in coverage. He's really good in zone. a and does run a ton of zone style. I would not be shocked if you keep Antonio Johnson at his nickel position, which again, why would you move him unless you really lose both him and De- unless you lose both Damani Richardson and Leon? If that happens, maybe you move him back. Maybe that allows you to put Josh Promoten or one of these young cornerbacks. But besides that, you need help at the safety spot. I think that Jarden Gilbert's going to get some reps. I would not be shocked to see him kind of split reps with Bryce Anderson. Anderson to me, feels like a Leon O'Neal type player. Really good in coverage, really good tackler, good vision, good upfield space. I did a fantastic job this year. I think Jared Kerr is another one that's probably going to get some reps, but I do think too. Anderson feels a little bit more. I don't know if they're going to be Jacoby Matthews later on when it comes to National Signing Day. So, what the case, I got to go off what I know right now. And to me, the biggest need is going to be at safety. I don't know what you get from Jordan Gilbert. I don't know what you get from the veterans on the staff. I think that if you have Bryce you know, Bryce Anderson play a similar style of what Damani Richardson did coming out of uh, Watch Haxi back in, what was it, 20? Yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019. He was in the 2019 class. When you have something similar to that, I would not be shocked to see Texas A&M take that next step, especially when it comes to having a guy in the back end of the safety room. Now, the guy who I was most surprised to see son. I thought Abraham Lucas was going to be one, but I'm going to go with another one. It's Cam Dewberry. And it's not that Cam Dewberry is a bad player, or it's not that Cam Dewberry was getting offers from schools left and right. But when they went up for Texas, it basically said, come to our school, we'll give you 50 grand immediately. Just come to our school on scholarship. You will be able to use that money with whatever you want to do. Because if you're an offensive lineman and we want to build our offensive line. I also think that when you look at players, he probably would have had an amazing chance to start at Texas, where here, he probably could start. I would not be shocked to see him take over for Kenyon Green, because if that's really what he did at Tascacita, where Kenyon Green was in school. But I look right now at what Cam Dewberry brings to the table. It's showing that he wants to play for a team at the highest level of standard, and Texas is not going to be in the for a hot minute. They still have at least two more years, if not three at this point before they make the jump over in 2025 at the latest. So you see him saying, I want to go play for the highest level of standard. I don't really care about the money. I care about playing at a school, at an institution, to where I feel like we have a better shot to win a national title right away. That, to me, was more impressive. So I was very shocked. I had talked to a couple people. I had heard that it was down to Texas and um, Texas a I personally, gave my own soul, I was like, you know what? I honestly think that because of the Horns for Hearts deal in the Pancake Factory, he's going to go to Texas. The fact that he turned $50,000 down says a lot about Texas A&M and the process it's going. So 
Cam Newberry was me the biggest shocker. Now, my overall personal favorite pick, the one that I personally thought was the best one of the day. There's two, so I'm going to go ahead and try and break down two. Uh, number one, I'm just going to go out and say it, it's Evan Stewart. I mean, it's, it, it's easily Evan Stewart. A wide receiver core has been the catalyst driving down factor for the last two years. I don't care what anybody says. You can go ahead and call me a hater. You can go ahead and say, oh, you know, you, you boo, you, you hate on A&M, you hate on everything with that. No, they have not had a wide receiver get over 700 receiving yards in the last two seasons. And this is on a roster that had a 9-1 staff in 2020 and 8-4 and in, in 2021. Imagine last year in the 9-1 and season, if Anaya Smith got 1,000 yards or if Devon Demas lived up to standard and got 1,000 yards. Are we sure that they don't at least contend with Alabama? And more importantly, if you have two 1,000-yard receivers on your roster, the College Football Playoff Committee is going to take that into consideration. Part of the reason why AM did not get in the College Football Playoff was the Playoff Committee said the offense was too inept. They weren't able to do enough. The offense just was not good enough to be able to live up to the standard of what Notre Dame was doing or what Ohio State was doing or what Clemson was doing. It didn't matter that they didn't win a college football playoff selection, I mean, a, an SEC championship. That was a part of it. But the real reason why, the biggest reason why AM did not go to the college football playoff was because of they didn't have a good enough offense. And if you add in a wide receiver, somebody with the capabilities of Evan Stewart, that's going to boost your status. You're watching right now college football. They say the SEC is so damn good. We're going to listen to two teams every single year. Georgia and Alabama have gone twice. It could have been a three-peat to where A&M went last year, last year if they just would have had a 1,000-yard wide receiver. Somebody would be that go-to factor for Kellen Mond. They didn't have that with Anaya Smith. They didn't have that with Chase Landry. They didn't have that with Moose Muhammad. They didn't have that with Devin Price. They didn't have that with Jalen Preston. They didn't have that with Demond Demas. They could have that with Evan Stewart. So to me, that's my favorite overall pick. My other one. And I know a lot of people are going to call me crazy on this one because of where does he fit. But it's Le'Veon Moss, the running back from, uh, from Louisiana. Why is it important that they got Le'Veon Moss? Because what you're doing is you're winning outside of your state. I don't think enough people are understanding that in the SEC, you want to own every single state. And Le'Veon Moss is a good running back. He's got a lot of speed. Reminds me a lot of Devon A. Chain. So in 2023, I really expect him to blow up. I think that he could have a uh, a really good 2022 campaign, kind of like what Amari Daniels did this past year. I think Amari Daniels sees his role expand. I think LJ sees his role expand. I think Devon A. Chain is going to be a legitimate GOAT next year, one of the best football. And I could see where Le'Veon Moss is like right behind those guys. But what you did was you started getting players from Louisiana. You started setting that seed. You did that last year or two years ago when you got Edron Cooper. You set the seed in motion. Start getting kids from the Bayou State. And right now, we do not know what is going to happen with Brian Kelly. We do not know if Nick Saban is going to be at Alabama that much longer. But what we do know is that state is loaded with talent. And the way that Brian Kelly recruits and the way that Brian Kelly is, you know, portrayed in the media and the way that Brian Kelly has been kind of out ostracized by, you know, multiple media fans out there. I'll tell you right now, I, I get it. I totally do. I'm not mad at Brian Kelly whatsoever, like not even the slightest. But the matter is, if Brian Kelly can't win in Louisiana, it's an open state. And the team that has won the most in Louisiana outside of Louisiana LSU is TCU. You don't want to lose TCU. TCU's in the Big 12. They're not a good team. They're an average team at best. And I really didn't like to hire a Sonny Dykes. But kids loved playing for Gary Patterson at TCU from Louisiana. Don't you want to win that state? You can absolutely win that state. Getting a top-tier running back, one of the best running backs in the state, to come away from LSU, where running backs do matter there, and have them come to A&M, and have Edger and Cooper come to AM, and now you're setting the seed, and now you're planning, and now players are seeing AM and what Jimbo Fisher can now build the program up. That seed is bigger than anything else. I also want to throw in Mark Naboom, the offensive lineman from Washington. I asked Jimbo Fisher this, and he was blatantly honest. You have got to win outside of your state. And it's important to set recruiting little pins in every single state in the country. 
So you get a guy from Washington. You get two guys from Washington. You get the kicker as well. I'm blanking on his name. He's from Spokane. But the fact that you actually set the tone with two kickers, with two, I mean, two players from the Pacific Northwest, now you're going West Coast. And you got the entire Southeast. And you got the Carolinas. And you got part of Tennessee. And you got Kentucky players. And you got uh, players from Missouri. And you got players from Illinois. And you got players from, uh, West, uh, you know, from uh, Ohio. They're all coming to Texas A&M. To own states where it's basically a one-tier program, Washington, it's Washington. Go to Washington or go to USC. Louisiana, it's LSU. To start winning in those states, that to me is more important than anything else out there. Le'Veon Moss, having him basically bypass LSU and say, nah, I want to go to your rival school. That was more important to me than anything else out there. This episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by Built Bar. With the holiday season right around the corner, you got to get some stocking stuffers, so why not go ahead and get the right treat that's new, nutritious and delicious for you, and it's called Built Bar. So many flavors you'll have a hard time choosing. Will it be raspberry, mint brownie, cherry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie? Built Bar gives you that extra fuel. You know the ones you need to bust through mall doors and battle through all the holiday shopping? Or when you're just standing in shopping lines endlessly, it gives you that extra kick and boost that you need to go ahead and survive. Because it's the season of peace and love, you know, we don't need to really be talking about what's your favorite flavor, what's your wrong flavor. Every flavor is delicious, and they're great for you because they're low, they're high in protein, high in fiber, low in sugar, low in calories. The bars are delicious and nutritious, and in fact, if you get them with a cup of hot cocoa, you got the brand new uh, Puff Bars. Go ahead and check those out. They're delicious. There's something around the flavor, light, fluffy, marshmallow through and through, different flavors, plus they're great for stocking stuffers. Go visit BillBar.com and use the promo code Locked On to get 15% off with your very first purchase. That's Lock15 for 15% off at BillBar.com. Stop eating the salty sweets and enjoy a treat that will meet your needs. Built Bar from BillBar.com. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. All right. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. Now, make sure your second listen is, of course, Locked on Bets with your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, wagers, odds, and much, much more when you visit Locked on Bets presented by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcast listing systems. Who was the most surprising player on my list? Uh, that's easy. It's the guy who signed today, Max Johnson. Max Johnson has no right coming to Texas A&M, but he chose his brother, Jake Johnson, came to Texas A&M. What this means is that A&M now has three potential starting quarterbacks. Last year, Zach Calzada felt like the de facto because he had to be. This year, you look at Texas A&M, they have options. Connor Rangman is going to be able to register if he wants to, and that means that he's not going to have to worry about playing next year. Haynes King is going to have an opportunity to battle out with a proven vet, what it means to be a quarterback in the SEC. And if he can live up to the standard. And Max Johnson, I hate to be this guy, guys, but Max Johnson has started in 14 games and played in 18 total games in the SEC. And he's won more than he's lost. He's won more games than he's lost. This past season, he was 6-6. Six and six. Last year, he went 3-1, and one, if I'm not mistaken as a starter, or uh, two, or 2-2. Two and two. So he's won more games than he's lost. And he has a 27-7 to seven interception ratio since coming out of high school. Guy's proven, guy's played, and probably the biggest thing, A&M. So if you can beat him, join him. So to me, that was the biggest surprise because of why would you go to a school where you already have a proven starter in Haynes King, but then... You don't really know what Haynes King is, and the level of competition at quarterback is so strong. There's also very little room for error. Johnson can't have errors. If he does, uh, you're going to be going to Haynes King. Haynes King can't have errors, because if he does, you're going to be going to Max Johnson. And if both stink it up, Connor Rangman, the guy who Jimbo Fisher is in love with and said was the number one quarterback in 2022's class, guess what? He's right around the corner. He's about ready to start playing. Now, Final one, the guy I want to see Texas A&M get. This is the important one because this means that this will solidify the class. I think that this is the one that everyone wants to go with. Who's the guy that I really want? It's Shamar Stewart. Plain and simple. Harold Perkins, if he goes to Texas, great. If Denver Harris goes to Texas, great. Shamar Stewart, if he leaves Texas A&M, that's bad. 
Because if you have a guy like Gabriel Brownlow Dindy who can probably play your defensive end, defensive line, kind of do what DeMarvin Leal did, you also could have Shamar Stewart do that. So imagine if there was a time where, say, next season, like 2022, that Danelle Harris, Fidel Dix are playing your outside. Gabriel Brownlee Dindy is lined up over the guard. There's a hole right in the middle, because don't worry about it. We'll send a blitzing linebacker like an Edgerton Cooper or an Andre White. And then you also have Shamar Stewart, not Walter Nolan, playing that other side. That's a five-man blitzing group that has four five speed. That's horrifying. They also know how to beat the living crap out of offensive linemen, both on the exterior and interior. Why is that important? Because you're going to win with speed. And speed in today's realm kills. You need speed. To be able to have a guy like Shamar Stewart be able to play the edge, play interior, play exterior, play from a blitzing position, and then have Devaris and Fadil Diggs, and still have potentially Tyree Johnson coming back, and you have Gabriel Brownlow Dindy adding into the mix. To have all these guys be ready to play and be able to play both interior and exterior. Play on the edge, play in the middle, tech, play a three eye tech, play a four tech, play a one tech. To be able to have these guys be interchangeable, it only makes you that much more dangerous. That to me is the biggest reason why Texas AM walks away a huge winner if they get Shamar Stewart. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Thank you so much for checking us out. We'll be back on Monday to break down more Texas A&M coverage. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com. See you then. And remember, you give me all.